What's going on? How you doing? I'm good, dude. Thanks, man. How are you doing? Pretty good. Um, finally back at the office. It's good How's time. it feel? It's good. Miss this place. I know, for sure. That's how I feel at the studio, man. So, uh, were you working at home, like, mostly for this whole time? Or are you just, have you been at the studio? Or do you, have you been navigating the pandemic? Um, well, the beginning of the pandemic kind of started rough. I lost one of my good friends. Uh, he passed away. So, we, like, organized a memorial and stuff. And um, that was, like, March 14th. And then the day after was quarantine. It was like lockdown, like everything was closed. So it was kind of weird because I was like the last time I seen all my homies, you know, but um, we were able to like set up a home studio and um, my studio is pretty secluded, like in terms of people, it's like a, like I'm the only person there with uh, one assistant. So we've been able to manage but I feel like within the last month, we've really been able to ramp things up and get more busy. Yeah, same here. We've, we've been doing pretty much everything remotely, um, coming in like you know, sparingly when we had to, but I think in the last few weeks, we've been like working towards getting everything back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Like I know it's it's hard, man. You know, you really don't know how to navigate it, but um. You see the rest of the world kind of like speeding up and getting back up to getting things closer to normal, you know, in terms of like the pandemic and like, but um, we're just a little slower, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, how, like, how was your work affected as far as, you know, creatively? Like, were you making more art during this time or less art or like, did your art change at all? Um, well, I started with these smaller pieces. They were like, I made a bunch of paintings that were about the size of a sheet of paper, you know? I was thinking about, you know, during a pandemic and these like big shifts, um, how people migrate. And I was like thinking about these small spiritual objects that like, tribesmen and stuff would carry with them you know along these like migratory journeys from one place to another if it was you know if one hunting grounds was like more sparse you know they would bring these kind of like spiritual objects and images with them so I kind of wanted to make my version of these small images you know that would um that people could bring with them, you know? Cause I feel like a lot of people were moving a lot. There's a lot of fear in the air. It was really scary, you know? Yeah. And um, also with all the social injustices going on, it was just like double tsunami of fear, you know? And, um, you know, it's been really unstable, but I felt like, you know, just like with clothing brands and, and uh, music and art, like all these creative um, forms are really important for people because, you know, they gravitate towards images that help them cope with what's going on or, um, you know, things to look forward to in the future. So like when I first was introduced to Bobby hundreds and like, uh, cause, I knew the brand, you know, but I never knew Bobby. And um, we first met during Freeze. And that was kind of like my my bigger break, I guess, you know? Like I started working with this gallery there. It's called the Not Ebby Gallery. They're in Culver City. They've been like really helping me out. And, um, you know, they're just a great team to work with. But um, yeah, Freeze kind of was this tipping point where you know, you work so hard going towards your goals, you know, and to be a working artist is, is one of those like goals that a lot of people have and like being fortunate enough to like live off your art is like really special, you know? So that was, I was able to receive that, you know, the universe like manifested that for me and, um, I'm super grateful for that. But one of the paintings, check this out. One of the paintings that didn't make it in the show is this round one. So sick. 
and it's like this image of these hands on fire with this heart. I actually was going to ask you about fire specifically. I mean, s symbolism in general, but like you, you do use fire a lot. And I was going to ask you like if it always works. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. You, or does it tell different stories depending on the context, different paintings? Well, fire is like both creative and destructive, right? You know, like just like wildfires, you know, like growing up in LA, we see wildfires all the time and it's destructive and it's sad, you know, cause people lose their homes, but it allows for new growth. You know, when you think of like a rainforest, you know, going on fire, the landscape totally changes in it. And sometimes it even helps with new growth, you know? Um, and we're kind of in that moment right now where everything feels like it's on fire, you know? And like these hands, you know, that's how I was feeling. Like at the end, like before freeze, I felt like, like what was I doing wrong, you know? Cause I was just like struggling so hard, you know? And like working so hard. And I got to this point for that fair where I literally had like maybe a hundred dollars in my bank account. And I, you know, my wife was just like, don't worry, like you're just working really hard. Like, you know, it's gonna pay off. Just like think positive, you know, she's always like, um, she's always uh, boosting me up like that, you know? And, and I like walked through that fire and I came out like transformed, you know? And um, this was one painting that I wasn't able to finish for the show. So for me to paint this painting after my friend passed away, after everything that my friend's been going through, and then, you know, I'm looking out at downtown that usually has like helicopters flying by and all these cars and sirens and stuff, it's dead silent, like eerie. Like, you remember like quarantine pre-George Floyd? It was like- So quiet. So quiet, you know, and people were kind of enjoying it too. And, but now, you know, through their job kind of being incinerated and it's like no longer there, that fire is followed by a new passion for them to like go back into like, like let's make my fashion line more successful now. Now that I have the time and I have some mental space and you know, so I've been seeing a lot of people doing a lot more creative stuff, which is great, you know? Sure. There's been a lot more, like, creative entrepreneurship and people popping up with, like, really unique businesses. It's been tight. Yeah, it's been really dope. And, like, you know, you as a person, too, you want to support it. You're like, okay, like, you know, we want to know where our money goes. We're more, like, connected to, like, our contribution to, like, culture and society and, like, the market, you know? Like, as an artist... There's a lot of discussions where it's like you're serving a market where it's only, you know, the wealthy. But for me, I'm also like, well, these wealthy people are also supporting young artists. So there's a there's a give back, you know, and then as artists to give back more to the community, too, through like doing uh, benefits, you know, donating artwork, doing benefit prints, doing collabs like what what we did, you know, um, and keeping that awareness going. Cause I felt like before it wasn't that apparent, but now people are trying to ingrain that in their every day. I've heard of some galleries telling people that, you know, 10% of their sales now moving forward will be donated, you know? So people are trying to like ingrain that, that giving back mentality, you know, which will support future engagements and stuff and developments. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually just talking about it with somebody at the office that I don't think I've ever bought more art than in the <laughs> past, like, four months. And other people have been saying that, too. And I think it's just, one, a product of, like, people creating more art during this time and also a renewed sense of, like, yeah, you want to support your friends. You want to, like, support projects like that and encourage them to keep doing it. And, yeah, so I think a lot of people have been in that that zone where they're buying a lot of like brands from you know from from their friends brands and, and their friends art and, and using their friends services and um i think that's good it, you know it keeps the money like within your network and uh, right 
with individuals instead of like bigger corporations. So that's been amazing. And, and seeing a lot of businesses like divert profits to causes that their communities care about is amazing. I hope that trend like really continues. Um, you talked a little bit about our collab. I'm actually going to bring it up. Yeah, dude, I haven't seen photos. I'm excited to check it out. People are getting a sneak peek of all of them right here. Nice. So there's four. This was uh, Mike Giant. Nice. That's a dope one. Little full screen. Anna Wyant. Snake with like the little uh, atom bomb. It ate the little atom bomb. Oh, that's dope. Amir Fala. This one's sick too. Yeah, yeah. I love Mike's work. And then this one. This one is so sick. And if, especially if people are familiar with your work, they'll know like these companion pieces or like two part art is something you've been mm -hmm. doing. And I'm actually, I'm like really fascinated by that. The, the process of uh, kind of creating one piece, but in two separate parts so that they can, they can live solo or they tell like a continuing story across both. Um, and I love that you did that for our artist series, Scarves. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I wanted to talk to you about, like, when did you start doing that, like, splitting them up? And what is that mechanism to you? And, and how does that help you, like, tell stories with your art? If you look at this painting or, or this piece that we did, you could see, like, two separate symbols, you know? And they create a narrative. And the narratives that I want like their operation is to evoke an emotional response, you know? So if you look at this painting next to like an old Rothko painting, he does these like color fields where he'll do like a blue kind of fuzzy square over a red fuzzy square with like a purple background. And then that will create an emotional response because these color fields are tied to, con to emotional connection. So I want to do the same thing, but ingraining my symbols and my imagery and my style into that um, formula. So a lot of the paintings have that registry kind of uh, compartmentalism to them. Like the painting that it came from is this one. This is like one of my paintings that I keep on hold for me. I don't want to sell this one. And then down at the bottom. Oh yeah. So, so you'll see that for this one, there's three different, oh, it's kind of hard holding the computer. It's like three different images. There's the hands, the hand gesture. Then I have the symbol of time, which is the hourglass. And then we have the house on fire. And the combination of those three create, you know, a loose narrative for people to, to connect with. And, you know, our stories are never finite, you know, they're like forever changing and evolving and growing and one symbol to one person might mean one thing, you know, like a house burning could, could trigger like traumatic memories of losing their home or maybe a past relationship, you know, or a marriage or, or a dream project, you know, kind of being no longer or it could also be a sign of like new beginnings, you know, or um, burning down of a abusive home, you know, like these symbols take on their own life depending on the person. So in terms of the companion pieces is that everyone's story is never finite, right? It's always, it's forever going. Like life is short, but it's also very long, you know? So it's nice to have these works where you put one painting next to another one and then that story can can change almost like chapters you know and with these newer paintings like the one that you see here the the imagery is starting to break the barriers and kind of flow into one another into this surreal like landscape so with this one i wanted to take the bottom register which is the house on fire and bring it with this hand that's running through this garden, you know, in the garden, it's like flowers growing. So I was thinking of that as growth coming from the fires. And 
below there's the locked door which is red and that red symbol of the door is connected with the keyhole on the guy's sleeve so it's almost like unlocking um freeing himself from from past uh from the past the uh the keyhole is a, a running theme in your art as well that i wanted to talk to you about mm -hmm. um can you, for people that aren't as familiar, can you explain why you use the keyhole and um, kind of the deeper symbolism there? Yeah, um, the keyhole to me represents the ability to, for, for accessibility, you know, uh, being able to access a dream, you know, a place that you want to see yourself in the future. It could be like your dream house. It could be a, you know, like a, like a destination that you want to go to someday. But, you know, when you're locked inside of a room that you can't escape, like, you know, let's, let's take the, um, the job as a metaphor, right? Like you're locked into a job and you see where you want to be, but you're looking through this keyhole and you can see it, but you just can't get there, you know? And it's like, that's like the past life, right? Like people said that that was normal. And then with the pandemic and George Floyd happening and Donald Trump being in, in office, the combination of these things lifted a veil that was invisible. And now people see everything going on, you know? Like the door has been unlocked and people are like, you know, just, just resituating themselves off of what's going on. So the keyhole to me is, is like a, it's a very strong symbol because right now I've been going through a lot of new uh, transformations in my life, you know, like I felt like recently I was be able to unlock this door to being a full-time artist, you know, something I've been working towards like my whole life, ever since I was like a little kid, I was obsessed with art. My uncle's an artist. I see him in his studio and his lifestyle and I've always like admired that. And um, so that's like, a, like an idea of that door. Another one is like, you know, I'm married and you know, having that partnership is great and we want to have kids and a house, but I'm not there yet, but we're looking through the keyhole, seeing where we want to be. And one day that door will be open, you know? Um, so some recent things I did, I did a commission for this hotel in Japan and they wanted people to be able to escape when they go to their hotel. So they commissioned me to do two keyhole paintings and I did like a minimal rendition of, of the hotel, but in this kind of fantasy world. And it was at the main doorway of the hotel. So it's kind of like when, they, when they're leaving the everyday world and they're going into this like hotel that's supposed to be like a retreat, you know, a totally new uh, experience. You know, I thought that was really cool because it's nice to see public art that is, um, has conceptual, that's charged conceptually, you know? Um, yeah, I feel like there isn't always that much thought in the paintings that go into a hotel or- <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like that's, that's actually yeah, like experiential art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's tight. Um, you use dreams and, and dreamscapes and like the color palette you use lends itself to feeling like dreams or almost like a movie or um, I love how you, you know, use these different colors to depict lighting. Um, also, you depict like, does it, sometimes it looks like you depict disasters in like pleasing ways. Right. Um, um, so how do you how do you pick your colors that you're going to use? And um, can you talk a little bit about like using colors to drive like certain emotions? Yeah. So, you know, when you look at the paintings are kind of diagrammatic, you know, it's like, it's like the scarf, there's like the house on fire and then we have the hands and then those two make an equation to have some kind of response. So the colors are really important because I wanted like the paintings, they have a thread, right? And visually, I wanted them to share a lot of the same colors. And these are all made with house paint. So I, I'm able to make these like big batches of colors and then have those colors 
visually throughout all the works. And so you could take works from like, you know, five years ago and one that I made yesterday and put them in a room together and they're all gonna have these conversations. And that's kind of like a dream, right? It's taking things from our past, our present and unknown things in the future and they're just mashing them together and but they all share the same colors you know they all share the same you know feelings emotions um and i really like that about dreams it's kind of like this middle ground where where all these things are confronting each other um because in everyday life we're only experiencing the present and then everything else is in our head you know and um you know so that's so the colors develop slowly you know i first had maybe a set of a dozen colors that i liked that grew i would i would um mix some new colors one color would be really fitting like only for twilight so like this pink right here is like and this purple so this purple is like the night purple this is uh like a twilight pink you know the reds are really important because they relate to the sun so you see the sun setting. It's just like these hands on fire. It's like we are all made of stars and we're all like a beautiful sunset, you know what I mean? Like symbolically. So so you so you see those kind of narratives in the work. I'm trying to let me see. let's see what I got in the studio. We're in the studio right now. I also love that you use like different size, different shaped canvases too. Um, yeah, we're gonna do the sneak peek. I think my gallery might be mad, but it's okay. <laughs> Tight. So check this one out. Whoa. That's a big old piece. It's gonna actually be a yin yang. So we're gonna have daytime on this yin yang, and then nighttime is gonna be on this one. Crazy. And you know, you could see these are like the sunset colors. This is the day blue, and they all kind of connect. You know. Then we have some more. So this is another doorway piece. And you know, here's the door, but it's unlocked, you know? In the other image with the house that we have on the bandana, the door is closed. So this one's gonna be like a cityscape. So we have, this is only the first coat, you know? So it's like really raw, but we have like the gradation of the clouds. We have the door. This is the same red door as the painting in the in the at the as the burning house right so that burning house painting that i showed you earlier the brown one that was made in like 2016 so that's like over four years ago and this one i'm making now so if i were to put this one next to the house on fire they would then create a dialogue um which is really beautiful you know i, I love seeing you know, they're kind of timeless in a way, like a dream, you know, where you're like, where they all can live in the room and they all look like they're, they're and from the same time. There's a little window I'm working on. And this one's sick. This will be, a, this is it's so interesting to see them in that phase because your, your final paintings are, they're so, like, crisp. The are so sharp that it almost mm -hmm. looks like digitally rendered. So it's really interesting to see them in that first coat phase. Dude, we go crazy on the on the coats. Yeah. So this is like this is like pretty crispy. Like all this stuff I like finished, you know? So it's like I use a little old brush and I crisp up all these images and I have assistants that help me do the coats. I like lay out the first coats. But then if you look at this fire, you know it's not that clean right here. Is that hard to let other people like touch your painting? You know, honestly, no, man. I think it's cool. Like, yeah. I'm fortunate that I can like pay f my friends to help me, you know? And like- That's a lot of trust too. Yeah, well, they're artists too, you know? Like, for me, it's kind of like, the more you get, the more you give, right? So if the art is doing well, you know? And I can only paint so much on my own. You know, and I'm not really the kind of person to lie and be like, yo, I'm painting all these paintings by myself. Like, you know, that's just kind of like deceitful. I'm like, you know, I 
have a really good team. It's my family, you know, I have like my full-time assistant. I have some other friends that help me out once in a while, but you know, it's like the whole thing. It's like giving back. It's like, look at the hundreds, right? You guys are one huge family and that's all bringing your homies up with you. As long as we're like, have a, if we're transparent, I'm like, yo, this is really good, but this needs a little work, you know? And they're like, all right, cool. You know, it's fine. You know? Um, so that's, it that's, kind of, it is kind of similar. Like, you know, Bobby and Ben lay the, the blueprint and the foundation and we see like what works, what, what doesn't and what kind of things we should be creating. And then we kind of mm -hmm. just like go and do it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Like once you lay that first coat, it makes it easier for people to then come and support you and like, you know, add to it. Yeah. And like my, my assistant, Henry Faye, shout out Henry. He's like the, the homie, the young homie, but, um, even his input, you know, cause you can, I'm so in my head when I'm painting, you know, and I'm like, so like tunnel vision when I'm painting these little sections and it's nice to have someone to be like, yo man, let's take a step back and look at this. Let's, let's, let's revisit this or think of new ideas, ideas that I can't think on my own, you know, cause Everyone that knows me, like, I'm a little OCD. Obviously, you could tell from the paintings. Like, I'm a little, like, you know, I like to craft these things, but it's, like, really important for me to have people around me to be like, yo, Greg, like, take a breath, chill, you know? Like, uh, and that's, that's kind of like my wife does in my life, you know? <laughs> She's, like, always making sure that I'm good, but I'm, but, uh, that I'm not over you know, just burning myself out, you know, and, but reimagining things, you know, it's like when you think of like black lives matters and, and defund the police, it's like an old system that's been in place for so long. And they're just like, yo, let's just reimagine our future. And when people are reimagining those things that, that they can never think of, then you're like, Hey, this actually makes sense. Like our world can be like a lot better if we're taking some of this money and put it into other things and, you know, we look at the statistics, all this stuff, you know, that's a whole nother conversation, but it just shows how multiple perspectives are stronger than one, you know? And so. And, le and learning from mistakes and like realizing that we're all like going through this together and that we have to acknowledge when like shit has gone off the rails and like, correct it and yeah. it's yeah it's all it's all learning yeah exactly it's all learning you know we all have to accept an l once in a while you know and and it's a struggle but like as long as we have people together you know and that you have like your good people around you everyone's sharing that energy you know we're building like you know on a personal level but also on a whole larger scheme of things as as like the world that we want to live in you know and um you know it's a beautiful thing you know and i think that with the bandana that we did it's just you know like like you said some of my images they can kind of seem like more haunting images but they're kind of masked by this crisp paint painting style and the colors and, and kind of the soft but rich palette and how these haunting kind of more scary things that we think about in our everyday life um kind of are painted in, in a different light you know and um perspective yeah exactly i like like we're moving right now we're looking for a bigger home my wife and i and um the house that i'm in in it's like kind of like the house that i'm painting i'm like i love this pad it's like so cheap it's like an old little spot. We painted it and fixed it up, but it's not conducive to us raising a family in, you know, it's just a little too old. It's kind of like an old little like back house shack, like off Chinatown. It's like real cutty, but it's like one of those gold finds, but you know, it just doesn't have like the amenities that I would need for like a baby, you know? So we're like going through that and, you know, and, and, uh, you know, these are the things that I think about when I'm painting. It's like, 
the change and needing to leave this one place that I fell in love with to go on to this new journey that's pretty scary and you know but also beautiful and you know it's a total uh, amazing journey to be on but uh you know in the end it's like it's all good you know we just like keep keep marching forward you know we've uh hopefully gotten past the bottom photo on the bandana and we're on <laughs> yeah on to the top photo. yeah you know i i i have high hopes i remain positive man you yeah. know like positivity and love is where it's at you know like that overpowers like everything you know and you could be like scared and planned for the worst and but you're not living like you're not living like that you know that's not living living in fear is not living you know so you know i i learned from my history of my of my family being incarcerated in the japanese internment camps during world war ii they they lost everything you know they lost their homes their businesses you know their like american sense of honor you know like generations you know and i was thinking about it like growing up i used to be like oh my grandparents went to internment camps because you know i would always go to grandma grandpa's house and as i get older i'm like wait it's not just my grandma grandpa it's like my great grandparent because when my great when my grandparents went there they were young they were little so their parents were there so my great grandparents then all my all their aunts and uncles and all their friends and then all their church homies all their like market you know a whole community man you know thrown into these camps dispersed out in the middle of nowhere you, you know and um like San santa ananita uh racetrack that was a japanese internment camp like all the barracks like all the horse stalls back there they had japanese folk locked up there with like guards and guns for four years you know and now it's a horse track and like, you know, that's like, you know, and um, what's that beach that Bobby's been posting about? Uh, Bruce's beach, Bruce Beach, same thing. It's like this hidden past that's just kind of glazed over with a little bit of a glossy surface, you know? And um, and to see the resilience that my family had to, to come out of there, to rebuild, you know, and to to just, kind of like not really accept what happened but to know that that's what happened and that they have to move forward you know they have to grow they have to do that and they did man you know like they they continued with their family my grandparents had my parents and my aunts and uncles and then they're having me and they grew up to be doctors i'm i grew up to be an artist you know and soon we're gonna have a child one day and and then they're going to go off and do something. So it's just like, yeah, their experience was a huge inspiration to like the paintings, you know, and a lot of the symbolism that, that you see in the work. They were that, that rough first couple and every, <laughs> every subsequent generation is like the, the, the layers, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It'll take time, you know, like with what's going on now, man, it's not, you know, people was like, oh, I can't wait till we get back to normal. And then, you know, some people were like, there's no, that's normal is not normal anymore, right. you know? And it's kind of like a bad dream. And, but we got to like, it's going to take time. It's going to take a while, but I'm up for it, man. You know, I'm, I'm here to help. I'm, I'm here to put in my, you know, put my hands to work. Like we did our bandana. I'm doing a, a benefit print with exhibition A. So we're gonna be doing some like hand, custom hand embellished prints that'll help, um, you know, continue funding these organizations that are fighting every day for us, you know? Um, yeah, just like, just, do, just doing it, you know? Love it. All right, man, I appreciate the time. I'm really, I'm really glad we could get a chance to like learn more about you and, and discuss the project and i'm really excited for these to come out uh and for everybody to get their hands on them they're sick thanks dude thanks yeah i'm i'm really stoked i'm like thanks a lot for asking me to do this it means a lot so yeah. appreciate it man
Thank you. All right, cool, dude. I'll see you around. Peace. Later.